ocean, golden sand, green palm trees, fresh fruit. This place is like a paradise. It's good that Luke finally went on vacation. He's sunbathing, drinking cocktails, and enjoying life. Such a perfect day. Maybe too perfect. Luke's smile disappears. Nothing is real. Two signs indicate that Luke is dreaming right now. What are these signs? The first thing is that there are two suns in the sky. The second sign is that the ocean has no waves. Luke gets scared. He realizes he's sleeping. At this moment, a giant kraken comes out of the ocean. It stretches huge tentacles towards Luke and screams out like a siren. How can Luke escape from it? Where should he run? There's no need to run anywhere. This is a dream, and the Kraken can help Luke wake up. The monster grabs the guy, and... He opens his eyes and realizes he's in a laboratory. He was caught a few days ago. A group of people have been conducting strange experiments on him all this time. It wasn't the Kraken he heard. It was a real siren. Flashing red lights illuminate the lab. The room itself is a mess. Lots of stuff on the floor, overturned tables. There are no people, only pictures of some scientists on the wall. There should be a key to the door among all these documents and garbage. Quickly, help Luke find it and escape. And the key is hidden, not here. It's not needed, the door isn't locked, see? Luke is about to leave the lab, but wait, what does he need to take with him? Look around the room. He can only take one item. Luke should opt for the shoes. They're going to be useful outside. Luke puts on a pair of boots and gets out of the lab. He's in a long corridor. He sees several guards ahead. They start chasing after him. Luke runs away in the opposite direction. There are three ways in front of him. One corridor is filled with toxic gases. The second way is a bottomless dark abyss. The third corridor is so hot that the walls are glowing red. What should Luke choose? The second hall with a chasm. See how the light gets reflected from the abyss? This means there's a glass floor covering it, and Luke can walk on it. Luke runs through the second hall and finds himself trapped. Several guards are standing there and everyone is looking at him. It seems like there's no chance of getting out, but wait a minute, the guards are not dangerous. Why? They're motionless because they're either well-done wax figures or real people who can't move for some reason. Luke leaves the room. And now, he's in a long corridor again. The doors close behind him. Guards are rushing towards him from the hall. And doctors are running from the other direction. What should Luke do? Hurry up, help the guy before they notice him. Do you see a laundry basket? There are white coats there. Luke should dress up as a doctor and walk past the guards. The guy enters one of the many doors and finds himself in a large room for experiments. This is where they keep their test subjects. There are several locked cells with people sitting inside. They ask Luke to release them. Unfortunately, he can only free one prisoner. But who? A werewolf is locked in that cell. An electrical human is in another. A seemingly ordinary girl is locked in the third one. In the furthest cage, there's a guy with a shark's mouth. Luke should save the girl. Come on, all the other prisoners are scary monsters. Did you expect a trick? Sometimes the simplest answer is the right one. Luke opens the cell. The girl's name is Jessie, but she doesn't want to go with Luke. She doesn't believe him. Why?
because Luke is wearing a lab coat. He explains to Jesse that he put on these clothes to remain unnoticed. He's as much of a prisoner here as she is. Jesse finally believes him. Together, they escape from the lab, but the guards and scientists notice them. Our heroes are trapped. There are three rooms in front of them. An electrical current is running non-stop through the first one. Three ferocious lions are in the second room. There's a fire raging in the third one. How should Luke and Jesse escape? They don't have to enter any of these rooms. In the corridor above them, there is an open ventilation hatch. These guys should help each other get in there. They crawl through the vent for a few minutes. Finally, they reach the elevators. But the heads of two creatures have got stuck in the elevator doors. One of them is a werewolf. The other is a zombie. Jesse and Luke can only save one of them. Who will survive without their help? The guys save the werewolf because the zombie is no longer alive anyway. He can survive even without his head. The werewolf runs away while Luke and Jesse get into the elevator. The laboratory is located deep underground, so they go 40 floors up. The doors open, and they find themselves inside an old hut. Our heroes go outside and see a winter forest. Jesse and Luke run forward as fast as they can. They hear dogs barking and people screaming. The scientists are chasing them. The guys come to a crossroads. The first way leads to a lake. At the beginning of the second road, there's a sign, beware of wolves. The third road leads to a high cliff. Where should they go? It's winter now, so the lake is frozen. Luke and Jesse run across the lake and find themselves in a clearing. Two guys are standing there. Hey. Both of them seem normal. They ask Luke and Jesse if they can come along. Luke feels that one of the guys is not who he claims to be. Hey. How can he figure out which one it is? If you pay attention to the footprints in the snow, you'll see how this guy appeared here. But there are no footprints near the second guy. How did he get here? It's suspicious. Jesse and Luke agree to take along the first guy. His name is Max. He says he's also escaped from the lab. He knows there's a road somewhere nearby, so they decide to find it. They wander through the forest for several hours. No one seems to be chasing them anymore. But now, they have a new problem. They're cold and hungry. Sometime later, they see a small house where they can warm up. But the door is locked. Where's the key? See this scarecrow next to the forest? The key is in its hand. The guys open the door and find food and clothes. They rest, eat, and get warmer. Soon, they're ready to set off. There's an old car in the backyard. There's even some gasoline in its tank. But when Luke is driving it out of the yard, the car runs over a nail. The tire is punctured. Now they have to walk again. It's getting darker and colder. Despite warm clothes, our guys start freezing. How can our heroes keep warm? There are old dry leaves, moss, and grass under the snow. Luke, Jesse, and Max put all this inside their clothes. Yeah, they stain their t-shirts and sweaters, but they also create an additional layer of protection against the cold. Finally, they're near the edge of the forest. Through tree branches, the guys see a road illuminated by moonlight. They're saved. Now they only need to catch a car. Max, Luke, and Jesse walk along the highway and finally see headlights. Luke raises his arm to stop the car. A small pickup truck is slowing down. The driver rolls down the window and asks if the guys need help. Jesse quickly tells him everything that has happened to them. The driver asks them to get in the car, but Luke doesn't want to. He's sure that this man is one of the bad guys. How has Luke figured it out? When Luke woke up in the lab, he paid attention to the pictures of the scientists on the wall. This driver is one of them. 
The guys run back into the forest where they come across a pack of wolves. The hungry animals surround our heroes. One of the wolves is about to attack, but a loud howl scares it, and it runs away. A monster covered with fur comes out of the bushes. Max screams and is about to run away, but Jesse and Luke look calm. Why? Because this is the werewolf our heroes rescued from the elevator. They follow the monster. It leads them to a safe place. This is a small village hidden deep in the forest. Creatures that don't look like humans live here. Werewolves, bird people, merfolk, and humanoid trees. They used to be people, but the scientists changed the structure of their DNA. Now these creatures are going to destroy the laboratory to take revenge. Ethan was in desperate need of a brand new pair of jeans. He came to a large mall, and a couple of hours later, he found his perfect new jeans. However, he didn't buy anything. He got super scared and ran away from the fitting room. Why? Ethan glimpsed in a large mirror and realized a guy from the dressing room had his face reflected in the mirror even though he was standing with his back facing it. So his back somehow had his face reflection. He can't be human. Caroline is always late for work. Every time she hears an alarm clock, she stops it and continues sleeping. As a result, her boss was very unhappy about her being late and told her he would fire her if she was late for work again. A couple of days later, Caroline was late again, but her boss was in a good mood, so he proposed a riddle. If she cracks it, she won't lose her job. Caroline agreed, and the boss asked her, During what month do people sleep the least? This time, the odds were in Caroline's favor. As promised, the boss gave her one last chance. So, what month was it? People sleep the least in February, since it's the shortest month. Alright, this one's pretty short. What can travel around the globe, but always stays in a corner? Sure thing, it's a stamp. Next riddle. There's something you can't keep until you're given it. What's that? Right, it's a promise. Last Saturday, Karen went on an excursion to a gothic castle. Suddenly, she got lost there and started wandering around the castle. A few minutes later, she spotted a silhouette moving towards her. It was a young man. He came up to her and Karen asked him who he was. The man replied, Well, there's something that spends all the time on the floor, but never gets dirty. And by the way, I don't have it. Karen ran away immediately. Why? Well, the shadow spends all the time on the floor and can't get dirty. And if that man doesn't have it, he must be a vampire. Jasper went out in heavy rain with nothing to protect him from it. His hair didn't get wet. Why? Easy peasy, Jasper is bald. There were 12 friends at a party. They wanted to play a game. Eric wanted to be the host, and Jessica came up with an idea. There was a bowl with 12 apples inside. How does Eric need to divide up the apples so that everyone gets one, but one apple remains in the bowl? Eric needs to give 11 people an apple each, and the 12th person gets an apple in the bowl. A grandfather, two fathers, and two sons went to a movie theater together. Each of them bought one movie ticket. One ticket costs $5, and their total was $15. How?
Since one ticket costs $5 and they spent $15 in total, it means they purchased three tickets. The grandfather is also a father, and the father is also a son. One day, all the animals on a farm were given some amount of money. A duck was given $11, a spider was given $44, and a bee was given $33. There's a certain logic behind this payment. So how much money would be given to a dog? The dog would get $22. The animals got $5.50 per leg. A duck has two legs. A spider has eight. And a bee, six. Since a dog has four legs, it would be $22. On the table, there is a row with six cups. The first three cups were empty. Cups number four, five, and six were full. You need to change the order to have an alternation of empty and full cups. You can only touch one cup. And you can't push or move the cups with the help of another cup. How do you do that? Grab cup number five and pour the water into cup two, then put it back. Mary was walking in the woods and suddenly saw a really fancy castle. It was getting late and she thought she might ask for a stay in that castle. It was a wicked troll's castle and he didn't really like intruders. Mary was captured and locked up in a dark room with two guards. Still, the troll gave her a chance to break free. There are two doors in the room. One door leads to freedom and another one is locked. The guards know which door will set Mary free. She can only ask one question. One of the guards always tells the truth, and another one always lies, and Mary doesn't know who is who. She can only ask one question to one guard only. What question should she ask? If Mary says, if I ask your colleagues to show me the way to freedom, what door will it be? No matter what the guard replies, they will show the locked door. The one that lies will show the wrong door. The one that doesn't lie will show the locked door too. Since it would be chosen by the one who lies, this way, Mary knows the wrong door, and she knows to choose another one. Marlena asked her husband Jerome to buy some food. She left him a shopping list. Marlena wanted him to buy some bread, two cartons of orange juice, and something that should be broken before anyone can use it. What did Marlena want Jerome to buy? You can't really use eggs until you crack them, so Marlena needed some eggs. Esme only needed to crack another riddle. When the witch finally appeared, she asked, What is as light as a feather, yet even the strongest person can't hold it for five minutes? Since Esme is a pro at riddles, she got home safely. Can you crack this riddle too? Only your breath can be as light as a feather, but you won't be able to hold it for long. Eric, Samantha, and Charlotte were playing volleyball on the beach. It was pretty hot, and one of the friends invited the others to swim in the sea. One of them can't go swimming because they're a robot. Can you guess who? It's Samantha. First, she's the only one who's not sweaty or red in the cheeks because of the heat. Three men tried to decide who was the smartest among them. A random guy passing by offered to help. He said he would give them a riddle, and the one who manages to crack it is the smartest. He said, You see three caps in my hands. Three of them are black, and two are white. Close your eyes. The three men closed their eyes. He put a black cap on each of them and hid the two white caps in the bag. Each of them needed to guess the color of the cap they were wearing. The one who can do that is the smartest. The men were looking at each other, trying to understand how to crack the riddle. Suddenly, one of them exclaimed, I'm wearing a black cap. 
How did he guess? Ah, well, he actually didn't guess. He tried to think logically. But each time, there was no logical answer. So he glimpsed in a puddle and saw his reflection. Henry's uncle Arthur was a wealthy man who loved playing pranks on his relatives. That's why before he moved to another country, he said he would leave everything he owned to his family. But no one could find the place where he had hidden his valuables and money. One day, a few years later, Henry was looking through some old papers. Suddenly, his breath caught in his throat. The document he was holding contained all the information he was looking for. It read, I hid all my money and other valuables at 3 p.m. sharp under my favorite cherry tree, right where its shadow ends. The one who digs it out will own it all. Henry was ecstatic. He was going to be wealthy. He drove to his uncle's posh villa and found that cherry tree. He waited for an hour or so until 3 p.m. and started to dig. But try as he might, his efforts didn't pay off. Confused and upset, he had to return home. Why didn't he find anything? It's been several years since Henry's uncle hid his valuables. The tree has grown taller, and its shadow has become longer, too. Jessica is walking down a cold street in an abandoned city. The temperature is so low that steam is coming out of her mouth. She turns the corner and notices a cart filled with food and bottles of water. It's a real treasure, especially in a world where the entire civilization is almost completely destroyed. But as soon as the girl touches the cart, three zombies come out of the building. They're approaching Jessica, stretching out their hands toward her. She grabs the cart and runs away, but then she stops. She understands that they are not zombies, but people. How has she figured it out? All these zombies have steam coming out of their mouths. That means they're breathing and they're alive. One famous movie studio hires new staff, lighting and sound engineers, a director of photography, a mechanic, a gaffer, prop artists, stunt performers, and an editor. But they all need to demonstrate their professional skills to get this job. The candidates have a week to make a short movie. On Monday, they start. Actors and actresses laugh and cry, sound engineers record all their emotions, the DOP captures beautiful pictures. Stunt performers are amazing. Prop artists create a small town with incredible decorations. One week later, the studio managers are watching the movie. It's terrible. None of the candidates gets the job. Why did this happen? Why couldn't they make a good movie? There was no director among them, and no screenwriter to write a script. Two friends are sitting at the same table in a cafe. One of them is speaking about the extinction of dinosaurs. He's saying scientists are going to get the genetic code of these ancient creatures. The second friend is talking about his sister's party. There were a lot of cool people, great music, and delicious food. Other people sitting in the cafe are annoyed by the guy's loud voices. But why is this dialogue so strange? Why is one of the guys talking about dinosaurs and the other is telling him about a party? What's going on here? These two guys aren't speaking to each other. They're talking on their phones through headphones. It's nighttime. Three girls are standing in line at an ATM inside a bank. The first girl is getting some banknotes. The second one is looking around. The third girl is typing on her phone. Which one is a thief? Well, they're all robbers. The bank is closed. Take a look at the sign on the door. It says open. So the closed side is turned toward the street. Where's my cake? The chef screams. Assistants and junior cooks are running around the kitchen. A steak is burning on a frying pan. The kitchen is filled with smoke. 
a plate falls to the floor and shatters. The chef screams again, where's my cake? Who took it? Everyone says they've been cooking. None of them wants to admit eating the cake. The chef doesn't believe them. Who do you think stole the cake? Nobody. The cake is in the oven, see? Jack is in a cold cell. There's only bare ground under his feet. In the cell, there's one window, but it's impossible to escape through because it's located too high. There are no stairs and no chairs, just a shovel. Jack has no water and no food. He needs to get out of there in two days. But he can't dig a tunnel since the walls are too thick and go deep underground. Jack will get exhausted long before he digs his way to freedom. So how can he escape? He needs to dig a large hole in the ground and use the dirt to make a small hill. He can then climb it and reach the window. Marty walks around an IT university building. Three people are following him and discussing something. Marty enters the Hall of Holograms. People walk inside, too. Marty sits down on a chair. As for the three people, they go on the stage, still talking. Some of them are holograms. But who? This guy has a flashing nail on his right index finger. This girl has two left hands. The girl in the middle is slightly transparent. They all seem to be holograms. But wait a minute, take a look at Marty. He's sitting on a chair, but his body isn't touching the surface of the seat. He's not real either. It's early morning. Sam leaves the house and goes to the lake. The sun hasn't risen yet. The water is crystal clear. Frogs are croaking in the distance. Sam takes several photos of nature and one selfie. He posts the pictures and writes this caption. I've had a great run. There is nothing better than a morning workout, my dear followers. Have a great day. After that, the guy returns home and goes back to bed. He sleeps until lunch and then takes his phone and sees hundreds of comments. <laughs> I wish I had such a run. Dude, why do you deceive us like that? Here it is, a real day of the champion. Obviously, people have found out that Sam didn't run in the morning. But how? He wrote that he had just had a run, but his face isn't red and he isn't sweaty at all. There are four different countries on one distant continent. Each of these countries has its own emblem with one simple symbol. The same number of people live in each of the countries nine ordinary citizens, and one monster. One queen, one king, and one prince. Two jesters sometimes drop by these kingdoms. What is this continent? It's a deck of cards. It contains nine regular cards, ace, queen, king, jack, and joker. Once, on a cold winter evening, someone broke into a bakery. When the baker came to the building in the morning, he noticed that the lock was broken. He called the police and reported a break-in. Then he went inside and realized that the thief hadn't stolen anything. At that moment, the police arrived. The baker told him that the place hadn't been robbed. But a police officer inspected the room and declared that someone had still broken the law. What happened there? There are almost imperceptible footprints leading to the pantry. The thief must have hidden there to wait for the baker to receive the day's earnings. Mickey has been wandering in a desert for several hours. He's tired, thirsty, hungry, and sleepy. He notices a big house standing on the hot sand. Mickey goes inside and sees a massive block of ice in the center. Someone must have put it there for a reason. 
Mickey licks the ice, but it doesn't quench his thirst. He decides to wait. It takes a couple of seconds for one drop of water to evaporate in the desert, so the ice should melt soon. The guy leaves the building and goes for a walk. Several hours later, he returns to the house, but nothing has changed. The ice hasn't melted. How is this possible? There are air conditioners on the ceiling. They keep the temperature in the room low and prevent the ice from melting. Florence, Anya, and Margot are walking along the beach, telling one another about the past week. All the girls look wealthy and successful, but several people are taking photos of them. It means that at least one of these girls is a celebrity. But who? It's Anya. Look, that guy is wearing a t-shirt with her face on it. Marcus is leaving a large shopping mall. He pulls his phone out of the pocket and accidentally drops it. Oh no, the screen is cracked. Marcus gets into a taxi and goes to a phone repair service. He sees dozens of shops. Each of them offers its own services. Battery replacement. The best service in the city. Let's fix your microphone. And dozens of others. Help Marcus choose where to go. Do you see a small store with the We Can Change the Screen Glass sign? This is what Marcus needs. Somewhere at sea, a huge ship is traveling. People on the deck are having fun, speaking, drinking cocktails, eating delicious food, enjoying beautiful seascapes. This is a passenger liner. It doesn't have any secret mission. The passengers are ordinary people with ordinary jobs. They discuss the weather, new theater plays, music, books, and travel destinations. They all seem to be intelligent and educated. The strange thing is that no one takes any photos and posts them on the internet. OK, the internet may not be working so far from the shore, but why don't they take selfies? Who said this cruise was taking place nowadays? It happened before the era of smartphones and the internet. A young guy is sitting on hot sand somewhere in the desert. There are several boxes, cans, sandbags, and water bottles around him. The guy looks up. He sees a giant balloon flying further and further away. There are two people in the gondola. They're waving and wishing him luck. A broken match lies on the guy's palm. What do you think happened here? Three people were flying in a hot air balloon over a desert. At some point, they began to run out of fuel. To prolong the flight, they decided to drop their cargo. Then they realized it was also necessary to get rid of one person. This way, the balloon's weight would decrease and it would consume less fuel. The travelers decided to cast lots. Whoever got a broken match would have to stay in the desert. This guy lost. Ironically, his name is Sandy. Ah, don't worry, he gets rescued in about an hour by a limousine from the Burj Khalifa Hotel in Dubai. He'll be in luxury, while the other two people are stuck in a hot air balloon over the desert. <laughs> Who's the loser now? Mary is a mermaid. She lives under the sea with her mother, Marina. Mary is 19 years old, and Marina is twice her age. How old would Mary be when Marina is 99? Eighty, because Mary is 19 years younger than Marina. Mary is hanging out at her favorite spot in the ocean. Both of the following facts are true. If all the goldfish sit on all the seashells, one fish per shell, one goldfish will stay without a shell. And if every two goldfish decide to share a seashell, one shell will be left without a goldfish. Can you count the correct number of seashells and goldfish? There are four goldfish and three seashells. 
Mary has a crush on Carl. He's a human. Can you find him among these three guys? The first guy has a mermaid tattoo on his arm, but it doesn't prove anything. The second guy is wearing a seashell necklace, but maybe he just loves jewelry. But the third guy is definitely Carl. His face and name are printed on this diving coach poster. Mary goes to a sea witch and asks her to turn her into a human. The witch says, okay, but first I gotta check if you deserve my gift. Solve my riddle. When you have 10, you have 10. When you have three, you have three. And when you have one, you have none. What is it that you have? Can you help Mary out? The correct answer is choice. Mary gets her legs and goes on a date with Carl. They're having dinner in a restaurant on the beach. But can you guess who should pay for this scooter? Mary. Only her footprints lead to the scooter. Therefore, she arrived at this vehicle, and Carl walked from the other side. Carl and Mary keep on walking on the shore and see these four guys playing in the sand. Suddenly, Carl freaks out and runs away. Why? This guy is a ghost. He doesn't have a shadow. Carl invites Mary to a birthday party. He introduces her to his best friends, Bob, Elle, Otto, and Hannah. Can you guess what's so special about them? They all have palindrome names. The next day, Mary goes to a job interview. She arrives at an office building with a metal door. It's locked, but there's a note next to the combination lock. It only has four words, starfish, pearl, fire, and turtle. Can you help Mary crack this code? All things in this list can be found underwater, except for the fire. So the password is fire. At the job interview, the HR manager shows Mary four identical glasses with water and different objects inside them. He asks her to find a glass which contains the most water. Can you help her out? It seems like the water level is even in all the glasses, but what happens if we remove the objects? The glass that contains the smallest object will have the most water. So Mary should choose the second glass. Mary gets a job as a waitress in a restaurant. On her first day, one client runs away without paying the check. The manager says, no worries, I know him. He has four sisters, and he's probably hiding in one of their houses. The manager is not a policeman, so he can't just break into their houses. That's why he looks through his sister's fresh Instagram posts. Can you spot who's hiding the thief? Take a closer look at the second and fourth pictures. Both selfies reveal fragments of male hands, but only this guy is wearing the same ring as the thief. Gotcha! The next day, a group of six friends celebrates their birthday in a restaurant. All except Kyle and Kitty order cherry punch. They drink it and five minutes later get sick. Mary calls doctors and they conclude that someone had poisoned the punch. She suspects Kyle and Kitty, so she asks them just one question. Why did you order other drinks? Kitty replies, I ordered tea because I'm allergic to strawberries. Even one small bite gives me a red rash. And Kyle replies, I'm not proud of it, but I'm really broke. I took coffee just because it's cheaper. Who's lying? Kitty, she said that she was allergic to strawberries, but the guests drank cherry punch. Carl invites Mary on a romantic weekend in the country. They stay in a fancy hotel and go for a walk. When they come back, they see that someone broke into the room and rummaged through their stuff. They question three suspects. Their neighbor says, Sorry, I had a skydiving class. I arrived five minutes ago. The cleaner says, I spent all day cleaning rooms on the fourth floor, so I haven't had time to clean up your room yet. 
In the lobby, Boy says, I was dealing with a tourist group from Sweden all day. We had some booking issues. Who's lying? The Cleaner. This hotel is a three-story. Carl and Mary go on a boat trip and face a huge storm. They end up on a deserted island. After a while, they get really hungry and go for a walk to find something to eat. There are four options. Cornfield with fresh harvest, a garden with wild sweet potatoes, oranges from this tree, or berries from this bush. Can you help the guys make the safest choice? The boogeyman in the cornfield is moving, and it looks pretty unfriendly. There are sharp thorns on these berry bushes. Creepy spiders are hiding in this orange tree, so they better choose sweet potatoes. Mary and Carl keep on walking and find a tunnel. Unfortunately, they get trapped inside. There are three possible exits. A family of mountain lions is hiding behind the first door. The second door leads to a room constructed from magnifying glass. The hot sun instantly fries anyone who enters. And there's a lake with crocodiles behind the third door. Can you help the guys escape? They should wait until nighttime and go through the second door. Mary and Carl find two identical basketballs in the field. They have the same diameter and weight, but one of them is solid and the other one is hollow. How can they identify the solid ball without picking it up or bouncing it? They should push both balls from the top of a mountain. The one that reaches the bottom faster is the solid ball because it needs less mechanical energy to rotate. Suddenly, the sea witch pops out of nowhere and teleports Mary and Carl into a dungeon. There's a weird note on the door. JMNBJ3SHLDR. They need to crack this code to escape. Can you help them? Replace every letter in this note with the one before it in the alphabet, and we get knock three times. They knock three times and the door opens. The guys enter a spacious hallway with three tunnels leading outside. Hungry leopards are waiting in the first tunnel. In the second tunnel, there's a tank with piranhas. Nobody can cross it and stay alive. And there's a giant fire-breathing pterosaur behind the third door. Which route is more or less safe? To crack this riddle, we should remember two things. Pterosaurus don't breathe fire. That's what dragons do. Moreover, they got extinct many millions of years ago, so the third door is the best choice. Karen is at a corporate party. Her boss, Mia, brings a bunch of identical envelopes and says, I personally put the grand prize in one of these envelopes. It's a certificate for a trip to Bali. But no worries, the remaining envelope contains consolidation prizes prepared by our sponsors. Can you help Karen win the trip to Bali? There's a lipstick print on this envelope. Mia has a similar lip color. She said that she had personally packed only one envelope, so the grand prize should be here. The day of Karen's flight to Bali has finally come. She calls a taxi to the airport. Soon, three identical taxis arrive at her porch. Uh -oh. But only one of these drivers can actually give Karen a safe ride. Can you guess who? The second car has a flat tire, and the driver of the third taxi is a werewolf. Take a look at his claws. It's a full moon, so he'll turn into a wolf soon. Therefore, Karen should choose the first taxi. Karen's luggage is too heavy, so she goes to the cash register to pay for the excess. Oh no, her card holder is gone. Karen asks three people standing nearby, have you seen a pink card holder? The cleaner says, I found two lost wallets today, but none of them look like yours. The cashier says, I was busy with another customer, so I didn't look around. And another passenger says, don't waste time, honey. Block your cards as soon as possible. Who stole the wallet?
Nobody. Karen put it in the fold of her hat and forgot it there. See? On the plane, the steward asks Karen to switch seats with another passenger. Karen can choose one of these three seats. Can you help her figure out the best option? This man has very long legs, so he'll probably kick the back of Karen's chair all along. The second option is next to this elegant lady, but she's stealing money from another passenger. Probably not the best company for a long hour flight. Although the third guy looks like a vampire, it's just a costume. He's sitting by the window, but the sun rays don't bother him, so he's the best option. Karen arrives at a fancy hotel in Bali. The manager shows her the three best bungalows uh -oh. to choose from, but only one of them is safe enough. Can you help Karen to make the best choice? The first bungalow doesn't have a door, which makes Karen an easy target for robbers and mosquitoes. And there's a scorpion under the bed in the third bungalow, so she should choose the second one. On the beach, Karen meets three ladies who claim to be millionaires and show her pictures to prove it. But one of them is fake rich. Can you guess who? It's the first lady. She's just modeling for an electric toothbrush commercial. So her luxury is artificial. Karen is walking down the shore and sees a party. It's a beach wedding, so the bride and groom don't wear traditional costumes. Can you find the newlyweds among these people? Take a look at the cake. The letters say Harry plus Amy. This lady is wearing a necklace with the name Amy, so she's the bride. And now look at the flower garland around her neck. Only one person is wearing the identical garland, this guy, so he's probably the groom. Karen spots her former classmate, Tom, among the guests. He's talking to a strange lady. The lady is wearing a hoodie and standing with her back turned to Karen. So Karen can't see her face. Tom and the lady leave together and hide from everyone on the roof of the beach restaurant where the party takes place. Later that night, Karen also visits the roof. There's no one else here, but after checking the roof, Karen knows for sure which of these three ladies is Tom's secret girlfriend. How did she know? The third lady's dress is decorated with gold sequins. She lost one sequin on the roof. Tom sees Karen and invites her for a walk along the shore. She spots four weird things right away. Uh -oh. Can you see them too? A mermaid is hiding in the waves. This sandcastle has electric lighting. Tree branches flutter in the wind to the right, but the flags to the left. And finally, the moon has a creepy face. The next morning, Karen goes to the buffet breakfast. She wants to get a smoothie, but there's no information about the ingredients in English. Uh -oh. Unfortunately, Karen is allergic to strawberries. Can you figure out which smoothies are safe for her? It's all about the color. Only the green and yellow smoothies don't contain any strawberries for sure. Other options are risky. Karen enters a spa center. The manager asks her to wait for 15 minutes. Karen takes a seat and falls asleep. She wakes up after a while and finds out that someone had given her a heart-shaped tattoo. She questions three suspects. Bobby, the client, says, Lady, I've just arrived on my motorbike. If I see any crazy tattoo artists around here, I'll tell you. Leah says, I've been cleaning the bathroom within the last 30 minutes. And Tony, the massage therapist, says, Sorry, I was busy with my client, so I didn't look at you at all. 
Who's lying? Bobby, this motorbike has flat tires. And besides, it was already there when Karen entered the spa. Luckily, the tattoo was temporary and the massage therapist helped Karen to remove it. But he charged her $5 for his help. Karen arrived at the spa during happy hours when they offer a 45% discount on all services. So Karen paid only $12 for a one-hour massage. Also, she had a pedicure for $7. When Karen left, she found a $50 bill on the ground. How much money did Karen spend in total? Can you count? Karen spent a total of $24. As for this $50 bill, it's fake, so it doesn't make any difference. Karen brings her clothes to the local laundry owned by three sisters. She returns to pick up her stuff in five hours. Unfortunately, someone has burned her favorite dress with an iron. Karen gets furious and questions the sisters. Mia says, I didn't iron today, it must be Pia. Pia says, nah, I was planting roses in the garden all day, it must be Gia. And Gia says, I don't know who's guilty because I've been away all day. Who burned Karen's dress? It was Pia. Take a look at the garden. Can you see any roses? Exactly. Karen returns to her hotel room and finds a huge bouquet in a vase. The note says, love, your secret admirer. Karen calls the reception to find out more. The manager says, one of the hotel's male guests ordered the flowers, but I can't reveal his name. Only three male guests stay in this hotel at the moment, Hans, Jacques, and Will. Karen meets them all at the beach and spots her secret admirer right away. Do you have any clue who it might be? Karen received pink lilies. Take a look at Hans's shirt. It has a print with pink lilies. He loves these flowers, but this doesn't prove anything. Will has a tan line from a wedding ring and he's taking pictures of his wife surfing. But Jacques is writing in the sand and his handwriting looks suspiciously similar to the love note. Spotted! Karen and Jacques go for a walk. He brings her to a pier with three boats. Jacques says, If you manage to guess where my boat is, I'm going to give it away to you. Can you help Karen find the right answer? Someone sleeping on the second boat, but this doesn't mean that the person is the owner. The third boat is called Jacques, but this name is quite popular. Let's take a closer look at the first boat. Can you see the red trousers on a hanger? They match perfectly with Jacques' jacket. Therefore, this is his boat. <laughs> 